Okay, so let's get started. Um, so today, first, I want to ask you a question. Uh -huh. Now, S1 cross S3 is a four-dimensional manifold, and uh, so are S4. Um, or uh, the product of two tori. Uh -huh. okay. So the question is, is S1 cross S3 diffeomorphic to S4 or the product of two tori? Okay. Now, one way to decide that is to compute their cohomology, because if two manifolds are diffeomorphic, then they have isomorphic cohomology. So, um, so we can decide maybe by computing the cohomology of S1 cross S3. Okay? Now, so far, we don't have too many methods for computing cohomology. Either we compute it directly from the definition, or um, we use the homotopy axiom, or uh, we use the Maya Vitora sequence. Okay. Um, so it's uh, too much work to always start with those techniques. Okay, so it's useful to have a few formulas. Uh -huh for cohomology. And today we want to talk about the Kuhnlitz formula. It's a formula that gives you the cohomology of a product of two manifolds. Okay? Now I want to start with the tensor product. Of two vector spaces. So I would like to know like how many of you are familiar with the tensor product of vector spaces. Can you raise your hand? Okay, um, not everybody. All right, so I will go through a brief construction of the tensor product. Um, let V and W be vector spaces and they can be finite dimensional or infinite dimensional. Uh -huh. And um, we define f of v cross w to be the vector space with bases all pairs of vw in V cross W. Okay. So this is a gigantic vector space because every pair is a basis element. Okay, So that means this is the set of all uh, finite linear combinations of VIWI. where Ri is a real number and Viwi is an element of the Cartesian product. Okay. And then I define a subspace uh -huh. um, to be all the, um, well, yeah, I define the, um, S to be the subspace um, spanned by elements of the form um, V1 plus V2 W minus V1 W 
minus V2W, okay? And the other way around, VW1 plus W2 minus VW1 minus VW2, and then, uh -huh. Um, you see, this is going to give us uh, like linearity in the first variable, and this, if you set it equal to zero, is linearity in the second variable, and then you have R V W minus R V W and V R W minus R V W. Okay. Uh huh. And then you take the quotient. <laughs> oh, I can't erase what's underneath. <sighs> so, okay. So, um, so the definition of the tensor product. is the quotient of this vector space generated by all pairs divided by s okay? and what this gives you is that um you okay so you'll have um these relations in the tensor product and uh and we denote by V tensor W the equivalence class of VW. Okay? And the reason we take this quotient is that now uh, V tens V1 plus V2 tensor W uh -huh, um, yeah okay so let me put it this way so um, let me see so yeah so um, V1 plus V2 okay yeah so now this is going to be zero um, in the tensor product. So um, if you take the equivalence class, it will be zero. So that means what you're gonna get is the equivalence class of this, which is V1 plus V2 tensor W minus V1 tensor W minus V2 tensor W is zero, okay? And therefore, you get this um, linearity in the first argument. So, and, and similarly, you have RV tensor W will be equal to RV tensor W, okay? So, uh, the thing is, when you have a pair, uh, it's not linear um, in either argument, okay? Because when you have a pair, you know, R times VW is RV, RW, right? That's how we define the scalar multiplication on a pair. So it's not linear in either argument, but with this tensor product construction, you see that the tensor product becomes linear in the first argument, and it's also linear in the second argument. And so therefore the tensor product is bilinear. So it's a linear in the first argument and linear in the second argument um, by construction. Mm -hmm. And then there's a natural map. 
from the Cartesian product to the tensor product just by taking its equivalence class. So, Well, people often ask me what natural means. Okay. <laughs> when natural ha has a precise meaning in category theory. <laughs> um, but let's, let's not talk about that. Um, so maybe you can think of natural uh, saying that, you know, it's, it's just, it's defined, you know, without reference to any um, choice, like, bases or coordinates or whatever, you know. <laughs> so there's a natural map and um, it's linear in each argument, therefore it's a, it's a bilinear map. Okay. This map. Now, the most important property of the tensor product is called its universal property. Uh -huh. um, and what it does is that it sets up a bijection between bilinear maps and linear maps, okay? So linear maps uh, we are familiar with. We have lots of theorems about linear maps, you know, because you've all studied linear algebra. You have the first isomorphism theorem of linear algebra that we use all the time. Um, I think there's also a second isomorphism theorem, maybe a third isomorphism theorem, but I don't remember what they are. Uh, I don't seem to ever use them. Uh, so what the universal property says is that any bilinear map induces a unique linear map. So any bilinear map F from the V cross W to Z okay, of vector spaces induces a unique linear map F tilde on the tensor product such that you have a commutative diagram So we have this natural map, the projection from the Cartesian product to the tensor product, and then we have a bilinear map, okay? And the theorem says that there exists a unique linear map, F tilde, so that this diagram commutes. And, and so what that means is that F tilde of, um, if you start here with V tends to W and you uh, go through the tensor product, um, let me see, uh, F tilde of, um, yeah, let me see. So suppose you start with VW here. Okay, so then 
one way you have f of vw and then going up and then down gives you f tilde of v tensor w and the commutativity of the diagram says this the f tilde of v tensor w is equal to f of v w right? uh -huh. okay um so you have to be able to calculate with the tensor product and let me write down a few um, isomorphisms <laughs> So proposition R tensor V, it's isomorphic to V and V tensor R is isomorphic to V. Okay. And then A tensor B, uh, now this just say, V tensor W is isomorphic to W tensor V. And the tensor product is distributive. So the direct sum of VI tensor W is isomorphic to the direct sum of V I tensor W. Right? Yeah. Um, so let's see how we prove one. To prove this, you need a map from the tensor product to V. But, you know, you can't just say uh, define. F from the tensor product to uh, to V uh, from sorry R tensor V by R tensor V uh, going to R V. I mean, it looks like that should be the map, right? But you cannot define this map. Why is that? You cannot define it this way. Uh, when can you define uh, a map on a vector space? How do you define a map on a vector space? Well, either you give a formula on every element, or you can just define it on a basis, right, and extend it by linearity. Okay? But these tensors, they, they don't give you everything in the tensor product, right, because uh, an element of the tensor product is a linear combination of tensors like this. Okay? So, this formula does not define the tensor product on every element. And on the other hand, this is not a basis, you know. These tensors, they, there may be, there are relations among the, these tensors, right? Because, I mean, we know that like two, uh, yeah, two tensor V, that's the same as two times one tensor V, you know? Um, yeah, so two tensor V and one tensor V, they both look like this, but there's a relation between them, okay? So you cannot define uh, F this way because these tensors don't form a basis of the tensor product, okay? So what you have to do is this. Um, you can define F on the Cartesian product.
okay, by sending RV to RV. This is well defined because these are all the elements of the Cartesian product. So this formula uh, defines F. And then you see that it is bilinear in the two arguments. Since F is bilinear, by the universal property of the tensor product, then there is a unique linear map on the tensor product. So. Um, there exists a unique linear map F tilde on the tensor product uh -huh, such that F tilde of R tensor V is F of RV, and that's RV, okay? Yeah. So you have to define the, ten the map on the tensor product using the universal property. And, and then I can define uh, an inverse map. So, go from V to R cross V, okay? Um, say V goes to uh, one V, and then this goes to the tensor product in one tensor V. Okay. And you call this map G tilde. Okay. So this is a well defined map. And then you see that F tilde and G tilde are inverses. Okay. Okay. So that proves that there is a linear isomorphism between R tensor V and V, all right? So whenever you tensor with R, it just disappears. <laughs> and then finally, there is a, a important theorem about the tensor product, and that is tensoring with the vector space preserves exactness. In other words, if you start with an exact sequence and you just tensor every term with the same vector space, then you still get an exact sequence, okay? So this is a theorem in algebra, not very difficult, and uh, I'm just gonna assume it, all right? Okay, and um, okay, so now let's um, uh, try to uh, understand the Kunis formula. Kunis formula. Huh. Um, yeah, so the, the Kunis formula basically is going to say this that the cohomology of a Cartesian product is the tensor product. of the cohomology. It's a very simple statement. And 
so we have to uh, define a map, you know, between these two uh, vector spaces. So let M, F be manifolds. Um, then there are two projections from the Cartesian product, pi one uh -huh. project to the first factor and pi two project to the second factor. Uh -huh. And by pullback, by pulling back, uh, you, get, you can pull back forms from M to the Cartesian product and from F to the Cartesian product, okay? So, um, so we get this, the projections induces linear maps, um, in cohomology, right? Pi one star goes from the cohomology of M to the cohomology of the Cartesian product, and pi two star goes from the cohomology of F to the cohomology of the Cartesian product. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so, hence, you can get a bilinear map from the cohomology of M across the cohomology of F to the cohomology of the Cartesian product, okay, where you send a pair omega tall. Now I'm just um, assuming that these are the cohomology classes, not differential forms. And I map it to pi one star of omega, which pi two star of tall, okay? So this is a bilinear map. And therefore, by the universal property, I get a linear map on the tensor product. Okay. So, by the universal property of the tensor product, there exists a unique linear map, kappa, from the tensor product of the cohomology vector spaces to the cohomology of the Cartesian product, okay? Yeah. Now I have a map, okay? Uh, and I just need to show that it's an isomorphism. And this map, kappa, has the property that kappa of a tensor, you know, is equal to this pi one star of omega wedge pi two star of omega. Uh -huh. um, so this is for all omega tall in uh, h star m 
cross H star F. Uh, yes. Oh. Uh. Uh. Oh yeah, Pi two star talk. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, so thank you very much. Um. And then, yeah. So we want to show that this is an isomorphism, okay? And um, so theorem, the Kunis formula is that Kappa is a linear isomorphism. Um, All right, yeah. Now, okay, so we can show that degree by degree, okay? And um, yeah, so, so let's look at degree K. Now, Uh, what are the elements of degree K in the tensor product? Uh, so the elements of degree K can come in many ways, right? Because you can have degree zero here and degree K here or degree one here, degree K minus one here, okay? So all the possible ways would be uh, degree Q on M and degree K minus Q on F where K, Q goes from zero to K. Okay? So these are all the possible ways of getting degree K on the tensor product. Okay, okay so what we need to show is that this is isomorphic to degree K in M cross F. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now, what about, uh, yeah, so let's look at one special case. And, you know, the special case is when M is Rn. Well, because Rn has cohomology only in degree zero, so all the terms here are zero except for Q equal to zero, okay? So kappa is going to go from H0 of Rn, tensor with Hk of F to Hk of Rn cross F. Mm -hmm. um, now, okay, H0 of Rn, that's R. And we know that when you tensor with R, uh, it's isomorphic to just HK of F, okay? And so, uh, so this map, kappa, is going to take tall, a K form on F, and then map it to 
the pullback by the second projection. It's this map. Okay, now, the projection from Rn cross F to F, that's a homotopy equivalence. Right. Um, yeah. If this is F, this is Rn. Right. I mean, the, the projection uh -huh, is a homotopy equivalence, and, and that homotopy equivalence induces an isomorphism in cohomology. Okay, so we saw that before uh, using the homotopy axiom. And so this is, this map is a linear isomorphism by the homotopy axiom. That verifies the Kunis formula for the case when M is Rn. And now we are going to um, prove the theorem by inducting on um, the number of open sets in a good cover. So if there's only one open set, then it is Rn, right, in the good cover, and we have verified it. So we have verified the base case, and then in order to do the um, induction case, we need this theorem that, um, or maybe a lemma, that if the Kunis formula holds for U, V, and U intersection D, then it holds for the union. Um, let U V be open subsets of a manifold M. So if and F is any manifold, um, so if uh, the Kunis formula Okay, so instead of saying that, you just say if this map kappa is an isomorphism for U, V, and U intersection V, then it is an isomorphism for the union. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so here I have to have some assumption on the manifold, right? So the Kunis formula said this map kappa is a linear isomorphism if, now what kind of assumption do I need? Yeah, so it's a linear isomorphism for a manifold M of finite type. Because we need that in order to carry out our induction. Okay. Now you might ask, like, well, if you use a different proof, you know, uh, can you remove that hypothesis? <laughs> and the answer is no. For the Kunis formula to be true, one of the manifolds has to have finite type. F can be arbitrary, okay? but M has to have finite type because there's, um, there's an example where uh, both M and F are not a finite type and the Kunis formula doesn't hold. Okay? It's a fairly simple example. 
I forget if it's in the book or not. Um, but um, I, I don't want to spend time talking about it in class. Okay, um, I can put it in the notes if it's not in the book. Yeah, so you do need one of the manifolds to be a finite type. Okay, okay now, and to prove this lemma, I mean, we're going to do the same thing as before, you know, write down the uh, Maya Vitora sequence with U and V, uh -huh. and, and then use the five lemma. Now, because it takes a lot of time to write down the Maya Vitora sequence, I have written it down here already. Okay. <laughs> um, so, On the top is the Maya Vitora sequence for U and V. Okay. On the bottom is the Maya Vitora sequence for U cross F and, and V cross F. Um, okay, and then what we are gonna do is we are going to tensor the top with the cohomology of F. Okay? And tensoring preserves exactness. So I tensor it with HK minus Q of F throughout. Yeah. So for every Q, I have this Maya Vitora sequence on the top, which is exact. And then I can sum these Maya Vitora sequences over Q. Okay. So, and when you sum exact sequences, it's still exact sum from zero to k. Okay. Okay. And now I have this Hunith map kappa from the top to the bottom, right? Yeah, so here it's degree k minus one. And then here is degree k. Okay, now here, um, yeah, I have, um, I had two maps, right, two maps, um, but uh, I'm going to, you know, add those two maps. Uh, um, yeah, right, right, because, well, I'm not adding those two maps. It's, it's really just, uh, you know, the a map on U comma the map on V, right, yeah. Yeah, because this is a direct sum of two terms. And I have a, a kappa for U and a kappa for V. And so I get this pair of maps, okay? And then here, yeah. So this is kappa for the intersection, right? Here is kappa for the union. And here's kappa for the intersection. Yeah, 
Okay, so I get this big uh, diagram of my vitro sequences. And then, um, you know, it's easy to check that this is commutative. This is a commutative diagram. That means every square is commutative. And in my lemma, I assume that kappa is an isomorphism for UV and U intersection V. So I know that, um, let me see, some of these maps are isomorphisms. Uh, so this is an isomorphism by hypothesis. The union, I don't know. Uh, this is an isomorphism. This is an isomorphism. And there's another term over here on the left-hand side that I didn't write down. And so uh, by the five lemma, then, you know, you have two isomorphisms on either side of a vertical map. And that means this vertical map is an isomorphism, okay? So by the five lemma, Kappa on the union is an isomorphism. Okay. And that proves the lemma. And now you can just do induction on the number of open sets of a good cover. We already verify it for one open set, and you assume it for R minus one open sets, and then you prove it for R open sets. It's exactly the same argument as before. We have used this several times already. Okay, so um, so we just say uh, by inducting on the number of open sets in a good cover of M. The, the theorem follows. The Punis formula follows okay. for any manifold of finite type. Okay, uh, so let's take a break for 10 minutes until. Um, 1122, according to that clock. That clock is two minutes fast. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, one student pointed out what seems to be a typo here, uh, because in this Maya Vitora sequence, when Q is zero, I get H of minus one. Okay. Um, However, I do need Q equal to zero here. Uh -huh. And um, <clears throat> so I need to sum from Q equal to zero to K. Okay? Um, the fact is that there's no problem with H minus one because there are no differential forms of degree minus one except zero. Zero has every degree. So um, this is okay when H is when uh, the degree is minus one, it just means that the cohomology is zero, okay? So, uh, so the term would be zero, okay? When the degree is minus one, okay? All right. Um, 
So now we want to generalize the Kunis formula because, you know, in mathematics, it's rare that you find a manifold that's a Cartesian product. <laughs> um, you do find manifolds that are not Cartesian product, but kind of like a twisted product. So, for example, um, the Merbius strip. Okay. Um, it has a center circle. Okay. And every point can be specified by a point on the center circle and then uh, a point on the um, open interval zero one. Okay. So every point can be specified by two numbers. But um, this is not the Cartesian product of S1 cross the open interval zero one. Okay. Um, so this kind of structure is called a fiber bundle. And I'm going to extend the Kunis formula to a fiber bundle. Um, so this is gonna be this is not S1 cross zero one, but it is a fiber bundle over S1 with fiber zero one. Okay. So a fiber bundle is like a twisted product. Okay. All right, so let's define a fiber bundle. Um, let's see. Um, all right, let me first introduce the terminology. So, for any map, say pi from E to M, the inverse image of a point is called its fiber. So, like if you have, say, E here. And it maps to M. And you take a point X in M, then this I inverse of X, uh, that's called the fiber at X, okay? Um, and we denote it by this E sub X. So you see that there is a map from the Merbius strip to the center circle. And the fiber of every point is a unit interval. Okay. Um, all right. So. Um, a fiber bundle is a C infinity surjection pi from one manifold to another that is um, locally trivial. Okay, so a C infinity surjection is a fiber bundle. with fiber F if um, M has an open cover U alpha 
such that, okay, so on, on which, <laughs> there are diffeomorphisms, um, diffeomorphisms phi alpha from uh, high inverse of U alpha. Okay. And this we would denote by E restricted to U alpha to U alpha cross F. Uh -huh. So there are diffeomorphisms for all alpha. Um, that make this diagram commutative. Okay. So you have E restricted to U alpha, and then the diffeomorphism phi alpha, and both of them map down to u alpha okay so this is just projection to the first factor and this diagram should be commutative okay um okay what this definition says is that Locally, E looks like a product, okay? And what does the commutativity of this diagram mean? It means that um, the fiber at a point X, so that's going to map down to X. And um, to be commutative, well, it should map into x cross f. Okay? So, so the commutativity of the diagram means that the fiber of E at x maps into the fiber of the Cartesian product at x. Okay? Therefore, commutativity of the diagram means that this map is fiber preserving. Okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. It maps the fiber at x to the fiber at x. All right. Um, all right, to save time, let me write, not write that down. Um, and, and so the, yeah, uh -huh. you see that the, um, Merbius strip, you know, is a fiber bundle because because it's locally trivial, right? So locally, it is a product of U cross a unit interval, okay? Yeah. Um, and then the, the Ray Hirsch theorem gives you a formula for, um, the cohomology of a fiber bundle. And um, you, you need 
and again, some finiteness hypothesis on M. So let pi from E to M be a fiber bundle with fiber F okay, over a manifold of finite type And you need an additional hypothesis. So suppose there are cohomology classes E1 to EL on E that restrict to a basis Tall one to tall L. Oh, oh, I guess I should have superscripts. Uh, base of the cohomology of F. Okay. Um, then you can define a map. from the tensor product of M with the tensor product of F to the tensor product of E okay, by, well, you first define it on the Cartesian product. So omega and then the sum of AI tau I, <laughs> And that maps to um, you pull the omega back to E, so pi star of omega, and then wedge it with the sum of A i E i. Okay, on E. Okay, so that's why you need to assume that you have these cohomology classes on E. And and then this map is well defined. And this map, according to the theorem, is a linear isomorphism. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so what it says is that the cohomology of E is the tensor product of these two cohomology vector spaces. Okay, so just like the Kunis formula. The Kunis formula is the case when um, the fiber bundle is a product. Okay, so that's a trivial bundle. Okay. Oh, um, there is a theorem about fiber bundles that I need. And, um, you know, we have all the tools we need to prove this theorem but it will take quite a while so uh, i'm gonna just assume it and the theorem is that a fiber bundle is uh, over a contractible manifold is isomorphic to a product okay so a fiber bundle over a contractible space is trivial. And a trivial bundle means that it's isomorphic to a product. So a fiber bundle pi from E to M with fiber F, uh, if it's trivial, it's isomorphic to 
a product. And here isomorphism means that, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, a morphism of bundles is just um, a map that commutes with the projections. A morphism C of two bundles E prime to M and say pi prime and pi is a map C from E to E prime that commutes with the projections. Uh -huh. It's a map that makes this diagram commute. A, a map such that this diagram commutes, okay? So if you have a morphism, then you have a concept of isomorphism. That just means there is a morphism going the other way. And if you have a bundle that's isomorphic to a product, that's trivial, okay? And the theorem is that if the base is contractible, then the bundle is trivial. Okay, um, okay so to prove the Lorey Hirsch theorem, um, again, you first verify it on Rn uh, when m is Rn. Um, so when m is Rn, the bundle is trivial. Okay, um, so the bundle is isomorphic to that. And then the Kunith map goes from H0 of Rn tensor Hk of F to Hk of E, which is Rn cross F. And we already know that this is an isomorphism. Uh -huh. Okay, and so now we want to induct on the number of open sets in the good cover. So again, you need this lemma. So if uh, the Ray Hirsch holds for U, V, and U intersect V, then it holds for the union. Hmm? And so again, we write down two Maya Vitora sequences. Okay. So the top one is the same as the Maya Vitora sequence for UV in uh, the proof of the Kunis formula. But, you know, in the bottom one, uh, now we have, uh, instead of a product, right, we have a bundle. Okay, so here you have the bundle restricted to the intersection. That's just the inverse image of the intersection. Here you have the bundle 
restricted to the union. Uh, here you have the bundle restricted to U and the bundle restricted to V and then the bundle restricted to the intersection. Okay. And the hypothesis is that um, for U, V, U, intersection, V, you have isomorphisms. Okay. So again, you have two vertical isomorphisms on either side of the union. And so by the five lemma, um, the map on the union is an isomorphism. Okay, so that proves this lemma, and then you induct. Um, so then, uh, induct as before on the number of open sets in a good cover of M. Okay. Yeah. So this argument is called the Maya Vitoris argument. And we have used it how many times? I lo I've lost count. Four or five times. Okay. Yeah. So it's a very useful method of proof, and it proves the Lorray Hirsch theorem. All right. Um, are there any questions? Okay. So we'll stop here today, and I will see you on Thursday. Uh, yeah. So on Thursday, we will introduce. Um, a new cohomology group <laughs> called cohomology with compact support in the vertical direction. <laughs>